Hey interns, this is Tony Canyas, and today I want to talk to you about the alphabet soup of insurance designations. It's one of my favorite features about the insurance industry. I'm a big believer that there is a formula for career growth within insurance, and this deserves a lot more, this deserves its own book, but I'll make it super simple right, right now. It's, it's a tripod. It's, it's the, the old cliche of a, of a tripod. The three legs are experience, networking, and education. Experience only comes with time, Networking takes a lot of work. It also only comes with, with, with time. And education, you can do really, really fast in our industry. And that's why education is so magical because you can get a lot of education very quickly paid for by your employer. And I guarantee it'll kickstart your career. And then the experience will take time. But because of the education, you can get the right experience in the right job. So I want to go real quick through all of my favorite insurance designations. CPCU. CPCU stands for Charter Property Casualty Underwriter. And, and it's not just for underwriters. It's, it's, a, it's the big granddaddy of insurance designations within the property and casualty space. It, it is eight tests, also an ethical piece. Uh, it gives you access to the CPCU Society, which is really, really awesome. So CPCU is a significant commitment. It takes mo most people something like a year and a half, two years, there's people that have done it in 26 years. There's people that have done it a lot faster. It's really up to you, but but I think a year, a year and a half to two years is a, a good speed. And But again, this is a gigantic designation that, that doesn't make you an expert in anything. It gives you a great general background in everything related to property casualty insurance. Then we have the C, I do have my CPCU. Then we have CLU. CLU stands for Chartered Life Underwriter. It's kind of the, the equivalent of CPCU in the in the life insurance space. I attempted it, I got to test it, and I was like, I'm done with this. There's a lot of math to it. Very, very well known in the life insurance space. So if you're in the life insurance space and you like it, look at CLU. Then there's the CIC. CIC stands for uh, Charter Insurance Counselor. And the, the CIC, use, you, uh, you used to have to go to a in-person class or a set of in-person classes and then every year you have to go back to an in-person class to keep it. Now there's online versions of those. But C C I, C I, don't, I do not have my, C my CIC. Uh, CPCU is kind of very academic. You learn a lot about how insurance companies work and why, what, how they think and why. CIC is a lot more practical. Uh, CIC tends to be more popular within the broker space, while CPCU tends to be more, more popular within the carrier space. Then we have our PLU. And I can't remember what our PLU stands for. I'll include a title saying what our PLU stands for. But basically, it, it is the CPCU equivalent in the professional liability side. So, so if that's the area of insurance that you work in or that you're interested in, professional liability, then look at, at at our PLU. I don't have mine, so I can't comment too much on it. I started my my insurance education path with AINS. AINS is the Associate in General Insurance. It used to be called just INS, then it became an associate. So the Associate in General Insurance is just three tests and an analytical component. It's a great introduction to property casualty. If you are new to property casualty insurance and you're not quite committed, you're not quite ready to jump right on CPCU, you're looking for that first quick win. AINS is a great way to get started. You can't go wrong getting started with AINS. It'll help you learn a lot about insurance. And even, even just getting AINS, less than 10% of all people within PNC ever take a single test. Even just get, getting AINS, even if you're never doing another destination, it still gives you a great head start. Now, the best way to, to, to use AINS is as a way to build your confidence and knowledge to start working towards CPCU. Then API. API is the associate in personal insurance, home and auto. After you get your AINS, it's a great little designation to, to uh, learn more about a about deeper dive into home and auto. The, then there's the a ASLI, the Associated Surplus Lines Insurance. The excess and surplus or the surplus lines uh, or the ENS area of, of insurance is a safety valve for insurance. It's less regulated and generally you have to, to uh, get declined by uh, an admitted insurance company before you can buy ENS insurance, but it's much less regulated. The prices is, is much is much less or completely unregulated. There's a lot of interesting stuff in the in the surplus lines market. ASLI, if you work for, for a surplus line carrier, ASLI might be your best first designation. I've never worked for an ENS carrier. ASLI was fantastic in that it helped me understand a lot more about, about the excess and surplus side. So highly recommend it. The AIS or the or the associate in uh, insurance services is a very simple, very short designation. The book is like this big helps you understand a lot of the processing side of insurance. 
and it's it's an, it's an easy one now don't underestimate it don't just show up to take the test do read the book but it, it is well worth checking out then there's the amim or the associate in marine insurance management and this one will teach you both inland marine the dumbest phrase in insurance which basically means insurance for things that move on land a lot of it's transportation or equipment that moves on land and then it will also teach you about marine insurance. It is a really interesting designation. If you work in the inland marine or marine space, definitely worth taking it, even if you don't. It's a very interesting designation because the biggest thing you learn, I've never worked in, in, in marine or inland marine, the biggest thing you learn, uh, a lot of the history of insurance, because marine was the first modern insurance, long before property, long before casualty, long before anything else, we got marine insurance. So a lot of, of, of insurance comes from marine. Also, it kind of teaches you to learn about it, uh, to, to think of insurance in a different way. So definitely recommend the AMIM. Also, there's a scholarship attached to the to the AMIM. Once you get your AMIM, you you can participate in an essay contest each year, which could end up end up getting you a an internship in Lloyd's of London. And I know this one person that that got that 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 scholarship. I did not. I did try. I did not get it. Then there's the ARE. The ARE, and it's <laughs> spelled with a lower letter E. The ARE is the Associate in Reinsurance great way to introduce yourself to the world of reinsurance if you uh, don't work in reinsurance and if you do work in reinsurance it's still a great way to to, to get uh, uh to become a uh, deeper and to learn about other parts of reinsurance that you don't do in your day-to-day -day job since you're likely to work in one piece of reinsurance highly recommend the are then there's the arm the arm is, is the associate in risk management and one of my favorite designations other than cpcu one of my favorite small designations because it's the only designation i have that teaches you how to look at insurance and risk from the perspective of the company buying insurance or the risk manager. Every other designation I, I've seen teaches you how to think from the perspective of the carrier or maybe the broker. But it's, so I really look, liked ARM. Then there's the AU. The AU is kind of the CPCU's younger brother. AU is the Associate in Commercial Insurance. There's a couple ways to, to use it. One is you get your CPCU in personal lines, which I did, and then you get your AU to learn the, the better learn and get deeper in the commercial line side. The other way, way to, to learn it or to, to use it is you want to you want a job in commercial underwriting, you don't have time to do your CPCU, get your AU quickly and use that in order to, to make it more likely to get to, to get an interview for a commercial underwriting role. Then there's the AIC or the Associate in Claims. Great if you're in claims and great if you're not in claims. A great introduction to how claims works. Then there's the SCLA, which is by a different organization than most of the ones that we talked about. SCLA is the Senior Claims Law Associate. I don't have it. I've heard good things about it. Uh, if you already have your, your AIC and your CPCU, you want to learn more about claims, SCLA is the way to go. Then there's the CRIS, the Construction Risk Insurance Specialist. Very well known in the construction space. Uh, so if you want to do construction underwriting, great, great designation to get. This one is from Ermi. Then there's the AIDA, the Associate in Data Analytics. I don't have this one, but I heard really good things about it. It's one of the newest designations. It, does, it doesn't It does teach you how to do analytics, but it teaches you how a lot of analytics are used in insurance. Great introduction to the analytics space within insurance. Then this is the AAI, the Accredited Advisor in Insurance. If you are an insurance producer, this is a great first designation to get. Even if you have your, C your CIC, it it's a great designation, second designation to, to get. Then there's the AFSB, which is the Associate in, fi in fi Finance and Surety Bonds. If you are looking for a job on, or, or if you work in the bonds or surety space of insurance, AFSB is the, is the way to go. I don't have mine, so I can't talk about it too much. And finally, if you happen to work in the flood space, ANFI, the Associate International Flood in Insurance, the Associate in National Flood Insurance is a very quick way to learn a lot about the flood insurance program. I hope this was useful.